third than Charlotte would like would be probably very fair. So uh, yeah, having had six weeks holidays with breeding and then just a little bit of hacking and stuff, uh, she's just been back in work for one week um, and literally just going to Charlotte this week. So yeah, she's not in full fitness clearly, and uh, but that's important for us and it's always really hard juggling the sport and the breeding. Um, but obviously that's part of us. Uh, she'd already done her qualifications, so we had to let the qualifying shows happen and uh, then get her uh, ready for the breeding and then go back and get ready for the finals. And the finals are at the end of July and then in September. So we kind of have to work everything around. But uh, I'll let uh, Charlotte talk a little bit about uh, this horse and what she feels from the training of her. Perhaps not exactly in this moment, but more before I took her on holiday. So, as Emma has just explained, she very kindly gave her to me for a week, so that means four days of riding. Um, not the greatest preparation, but she's five, and she is a mare that, for me, as a rider, I really, really love. Um, she, as you can see, she's very going means that she's Dutch. I'll just get that in. I love the Dutch horses and uh, she's, did you say her breeding over? Yeah, she's by the Valdi. She's by the Valdi out of the Donahall Classic Mare. So her mother, the Donahall Mare, is the same mother as first of all Maradona. And, uh, but she's the Vivaldi half-sister and obviously a few years ago. So I was very lucky to buy her as Paul from the breeder George Siebeling. Uh, in Germany, who's one of the most successful Oldenburg breeders. And she's also the half sister to Siegerhit, who's been very successful at Grand Prix with Juliana Brockers, and uh, recently moved to Andreas Hellstrand stable. That's been quite a big thing on Facebook in the last two weeks. Uh, but she's also the half sister of this very successful Grand Prix horse by Sandra Hit. So, for me, it's really, really important when I get on a horse that the first thing I want to feel is has it got a trainable mind? Is it willing and accepting? And she is, she is, she is like a sponge. You teach her something and the next day she's got it. And uh, she's super clever. She's really, what I say, self-motivated. She's one of these horses that for me, I can sit here and do very little and you can see for a mare, for her shape, that she is quite short and um, got a great feeling when I ride her with the shape. I feel like it's easy to put her on the bit. She's got a good neck, she's very, from, from the wither, very up. And she's not too long in the back for a mare. Um, Actually, she's very easy to adjust. She's very easy to go sideways and to be able to shorten and lengthen, she's easy to do that as well. So when I'm thinking of the future towards the Grand Prix, I really want to be able to have the feeling that I can shorten and then I can lengthen because obviously the horses have to sit for all the collective work, but then they also have to be able to push for all the lengthening. So, when it comes to doing the piaf and the massage, so the piaf and the, sorry, the pirouettes, they're the sitting movements, and the extensions of the massage and the pushings. So, she gives me great hope in those. I still feel for my canter at the moment, it's a little bit that she's not being in work, that I would like a little bit more jump in the canter. Um, she just gets on the shoulder a little bit too much and then the canter becomes a little bit snappy. So for me as a rider, I have to work on just trying to put her in a better balance if she's only five. So I just push her a little bit sideways just to try and help open the canter, get her a little bit looser in her body. But you can see how easy it is. And then if I go for a little bit of 
travis or a bend through the body. And you can see she's so loose and so easy and it's not caught, pushed or shoved. And it's very, very important for me as a rider that I can sit here and do as little as possible. But she is in a good balance. It's my job to put her in that balance and then she does the rest. So between my leg and my hand, I put her up, put her in the right frame, I hold it with my seat. So I push down a little bit towards, not down into the back, but I'm sitting and pushing her up to the bridle, and then I can carry my hand and then she does the rest. And what you can't see I'm doing, but every so often I give her a little bar bowl, rebalance her when I feel like she loses it. And it is very important, you will find most horses have one side easier than the other. And straight away when I canter on the right side, I can feel it's a much better canter. So she has to get stronger on the left, more supple, even into the contact. So this canter to me feels She's more uphill, the shoulder comes much more up and free. And I get a much better moment of the suspension in the counter. Again. But she is one of those horses where you can just keep playing. And you, you give her a question and she answers it. And you can feel her when you're riding her, every question I ask her, she's thinking. And that is so important to me when I'm riding, that I have a horse that wants to work with me, not against me. And it really pays off, you know, the partnership that you can get in a horse. And the communication you can create through your body. So I'll do a little bit of leg spinning. Thank you very much, Charlotte. I think maybe you could do a nice uh, final round if you feel like that's enough or whatever you want to share. Can we just have some music and a nice round? Thank you, music man. Music man. I thought that I've been hurt before, but no one's ever left me quite this sore. Your words cut deeper than a knife Now I need someone to breathe 